Solar is the energy you live by. What's the first thing a plant does when it pops out of the ground? Puts out its solar collectors, its leaves, and starts making sugars and carbohydrates, which you eat, which means you are solar powered. <laughs> then on top of that, you go out and create even more energy. Humans are the only creatures on Earth that use energy. Lighting fires, generating electricity. Think of all the energy you use around your house. Can solar provide all that too? When I was in college, it was in the mid-1970s, and the U.S. was in the midst of an energy crisis. Everybody thought the oil was going to run out. So did I. So I started studying alternatives and eventually got a job at the U.S. Department of Energy. Here we are 40 years later, and everybody's worried about the climate. And some people actually think we'd be better off if the oil had run out. But either way, after 40 years of research and development, there are cost-effective, viable alternatives. And I can prove it, and I do that through competitions. Do you recognize this car? It's the Sun Racer. It won the World Solar Challenge in 1987. It's an electric race car that got all its power from converting sunlight directly into electricity. And it raced across the Australian outback at 41 miles an hour. I thought it was magic. So I immediately came back and <clears throat> started making races in the United States because I saw it as a way to demonstrate not only solar technology, but also electric vehicle technology. And so for 15 years, I crisscrossed the United States with these teams as we raced solar cars. And by the end of a decade, they were going 70 miles an hour down the street. It was hard to catch up to them. And a lot of those components are now in the hybrids and the electric vehicles that are out there today. Well, as the new millennium approached, I decided I wanted to create a competition for homes. Homes use twice as much energy in a, as a car. So I was at home one night and my teenage son walks in. I said, hey, Brian, what do you think about a competition with homes? And he said, dad, that sounds boring. <laughs> Minor setback, but it actually helped me. <laughs> you know, it kind of honed my ideas of what, who I was trying to create this competition for. And this is the way I saw it. All of us, as individuals, are responsible for 100% of the energy we use on a daily basis. We all make personal choices. You know, do you walk, ride a bike, ride a bus, drive a car? Do you turn out lights when you leave the room? You know, do you insulate the attic or put a solar system on? Well, what about this auditorium, or the hotel I slept at, or the airport I flew into? Who's responsible for those buildings if they're wasting energy? Well, the answer is architects and engineers. They're responsible for all the buildings and industrial infrastructure. And if you think about it, they're responsible for just about everything. That makes them very important people, so be nice to them. <laughs> but you also have an important role to play. Because if you total up all the energy in both the residential and transportation sectors, that amounts to about half of all the energy used in the world. And that's all our individual contributions. Well, now I had the concept down. I was confident that I could challenge the people who design and build the houses to do more, and the people who live in the houses to learn more. Well, first thing I had to do was come up with a place to hold it. So I walked out of my office across the street onto the National Mall. Wow, what a place to hold a competition right in front of the Capitol and across the street from the White House. Doesn't get any better than that. Then I had to come up with some rules and a name. So we sat down, we, we figured out that we could evaluate these houses in 10 ways. You could put judges through there and, and look at engineering and uh, architectural excellence, look at market appeal and affordability and communications. You could also measure the houses for heating and cooling and appliances and lighting and hot water. I, we even had them charge up an electric vehicle. So I was sitting at dinner one night, and this time it was with my wife, and I was holding out my ten fingers, and she said, call it a solar decathlon. 
That was brilliant. I got a house full of geniuses. <laughs> so the next step was to announce it. And we did in the year 2000, right at the new millennium, that there was going to be a competition in Washington, D.C. in the year 2002. And I sent invitations out to every dean of architecture and every dean of engineering in the country, challenging them to design and build from the ground up a solar-powered house that was also highly efficient. And it gave them two years to do that with their students uh, on campus. They'd build it on campus and then bring it to the National Mall and set it up in a village, because I wanted all the people in Washington to be able to come through and tour the houses. That means they had to be a full-size house. And we gave the teams one week to build their house on, on the mall, which they did, amazingly, and then they ran a 10-day competition. And we, we required six students to live in the houses. We call them decathletes. And that simulated a family of six and made them do more than necessary to prove that solar can provide all the power you need for our modern conveniences. So they cooked meals and washed dishes and did all these contests. At the same time, they had to give tours to hundreds of people who were coming in the house. So it turned them into master communicators because they had to describe the, the attributes of their house and their strategy and the materials they, they chose. Uh, it, was, it was a real educational experience for them. And these houses were so beautiful. You know, they had to impress the judges. So they worked really hard at that. And when we got people inside, you couldn't get them back out to get the next group in. Well, in those days, we didn't have social media. So it depended on the newspaper. And this is the Washington Post article that uh, put it on the weekend section. And I love this photo because it captures it so perfectly. It's students on the roof showing adults how to do it. And then we did have huge crowds. It was a great success. About 100,000 people came and they lined up to go in the houses. This is the University of Colorado at Boulder. They won that very first contest and set the standard. And I want to show you uh, how the houses improved over time. This is, I think, three or four competitions later in 2011. University of Maryland's watershed house won that competition. And what they did is expand the solution from just energy, um, energy and, and energy efficiency of the building to include sustainability. So they had recycled materials and green walls and actually they were catching water off their roof to conserve that and use that, which is great in areas where water is precious. So we've held six uh, competitions now, all of them successful and the houses get better and better each time and we educate more and more people each time. And we've expanded it around the world. There were two events in Madrid, Spain and this, pa this summer, the French held their event on the grounds of Versailles. Imagine that, that rivals the National Mall. Man, that was, a, that was really an awesome place. And last year, we, they held one in China, and I gotta show you the photo of this. This was just amazing. 250,000 people showed up. They were pushing the front door down. They wanted to get in so bad. They were so anxious and excited to see homes of the future solar-powered homes, it really made an impact there. And these are all the people lined up 95 degree heat, and they were all using their parasols to keep them shaded while they did that, but yeah, it left a real impact there. And I want to announce that there's going to be a new competition in Colombia, South America next year, and they're going to focus on solutions for tropical climates, so I'm real excited about that. But you don't have to travel the world to see one unless you want to. It's going to be uh, our next event is right here in Orange County at the Great Park. So you can look forward to, to that. But you need to mark your calendars and remember it because it is. It's next October 8th through the 18th. Right now, this, uh, this next set of students are halfway point in designing and building their houses. And we have our webpage, solardecathlon.gov, if you want to find information about that. You should reach out and connect with these teams because they're trying to assemble their house and find resources. So if anyone wants to get involved with that, they can. But most of all, you should come to meet these decathletes. 
They're so passionate, they have so much to share, and they want to share it. And the houses have so much to offer you, too. Each one is different. There's this diversity of, of designs there, and there's something for you to take away for each and every one. You know, none of us are quite sure what the future is going to hold. One thing I know for sure is there's thousands of decathletes out there and solar racers who are leaders, and they're working hard to do their part. Did it ever occur to all of you that as individuals collectively responsible for almost half of all the energy used in the world, you have a lot of power? And I'm not talking about energy or brain power. It's the power to change the world. There are seven billion people in the Earth. That's billions of energy choices being made every day. If somehow you can get connected and learn to work together, you could make a lot of power. Thank you. <laughs>